Here's a big culprit that lots of folks are talking about. Depression is an inflammatory illness. Many of our most important illnesses, many of our biggest killers, are inflammatory illnesses. Why do we have inflammation, first of all? What, does infl what is it designed to do? What she just said is, and maybe I can, can illustrate this with an example. You ever had a splinter? Right? And it gets all inflamed. How do you know it's inflamed? It gets red and swollen. Why? Because blood has been rushed to the site. So we have, we have antibodies. We have um, natural killer cells that will attack any invading pathogens. And we, we have tissue repair factors that will grow new tissue, repair the injury. The average American has unhealthy, frighteningly unhealthy levels of inflammation. And in fact, if we look at so-called diseases of civilization or diseases of modernity, these are all of our biggest epidemics. Every single one is characterized by high inflammation. If there's been one insight and innovation in my research group over the last several years, it's simply been that we think depression belongs on this list. Depression is an inflammatory illness. Here's something many of you may not have walked in here knowing tonight. The inflamed brain is a depressed brain. Inflammation is powerfully capable of triggering depression. But I'll bet many of you also know somebody who has a completely wrong idea of what we mean when we're talking about depressive illness, when we're talking about clinical depression. So what's the misunderstanding? What, what would people misunderstand if they heard someone say, oh, um, I'm battling depression? Yeah, many of my patients have been told exactly that. Get over it. Personality related. Oh, yeah, this is your personality. You're just a slacker. Um, this is just something under your control. Because when we're talking about depressive illness, we're talking about something that's debilitating, that changes the functioning of the brain, changes the functioning of the body, changes our hormone function, robs us of the most restorative phase of sleep, robs us of our energy, robs us of our concentration, robs us of our memory, robs us of our ability to experience pleasure, lights up the brain's pain circuits, and people said stupid things like, hey, come on, snap out of it. As if, he said, as if I didn't want to snap out of it, as if I wouldn't give anything to be able to feel better. That's what we're talking about when we're talking about depressive illness. It leads in this country to over 30,000 deaths every year due to depression-linked suicide. Why? Because depression can rob a person of their will to live. And as I mentioned, it lights up the brain's pain circuitry. People who are suffering from clinical depression feel a kind of pain that they can't quite put into words. They don't really know where it hurts. They just know it hurts. And they want as any sane person wants. They want escape, they want relief. For some of them, the desperation mounts to such a level that the ultimate tragedy ensues. Not as someone who came here tonight to bash medications because they've saved many lives. For those for whom they are helpful, they can be a godsend. But the dirty little secret among us clinical researchers is that the medications do not live up to the marketing hype. Okay, um, fatty acids. Really quickly, your brain is mostly made up of fat. Did you know that? Your brain is 60% fat by dry weight. There are two types of fats that your body cannot make. Most kinds of fat that are in your brain, your body can make, but there are two kinds that it cannot make. They're called omega-3s and omega-6s. They're called essential fatty acids. Why essential? Because they have to come from your diet. You can't make them. They're both critical for proper brain function, omega-3s and omega-6s. They're both critical for regulating inflammation. They play complementary roles in the body. Generally speaking, omega-6s build inflammatory hormones. Omega-3s build anti-inflammatory hormones. What should we be looking for for an omega-6, omega-3 ratio? We're going to do a blood test, about 2 to 1. In the brain, it's about 1 to 1. But in the blood, it's about 2 to 1. Now, modern American diet, unfortunately, can you see this? If you can, I'll, I'll tell it to you. 20 to 1. Now, antidepressant dose of omega-3s. If you're going to get omega-3s, how much do you need? The best research evidence suggests that it's, the starting dose is 1,000 milligrams per day of EPA. Now, 
I like to see patients take DHA as well. It comes along for the ride if you get it in a natural fish oil source. Does that make sense? I want you to have it in the way it's found in nature. Why? Because it, there's some evidence that it kind, of, it kind of freaks out the brain a little bit when it's only seeing EPA and not any DHA. So we like our patients to get 1,000 milligrams per day of EPA to start. Some people benefit from 2,000. So if we're not seeing any sort of effect, any sort of benefit on any level after a couple weeks on 1,000, we'll often bump it up to 2,000. If you look at the side of a bottle of fish oil supplement, omega-3 supplement, you will see um, something like this. It says omega-3 fatty acids, 500 milligrams, but you have to look at the fine print, how much EPA. This one says 300. So notice that even though the capsule by the way, it's, it's even more complicated than this because there'll be something that'll say one capsule equals, it'll be 1,000 milligrams per capsule of something. And people say, oh, I'm supposed to take 1,000 and this capsule has 1,000, so I should take one capsule. The, the kind of fish oil that you would buy at a typical drugstore would have 180 milligrams of EPA. If you do the math on that, if you can do it in your head, that means six capsules to get an antidepressant dose. Actually, six to 12 to get an antidepressant dose. Potential side effects. Uh, if you get a low grade, a low quality fish oil, have any of you ever had indigestion or, God forbid, nasty fishy burps? That's what we call them in the business. Now, you know, how many of you have ever had nasty fishy burps at some point from a... That's a sign that you have just ingested a capsule of semi-rancid fish oil. And after your digestive juices in your stomach, made their way through that outer gel coating, they spill this nasty, rancid fish oil into your stomach. No wonder that you're burping that back up. By the way, just in case you were wondering, if it's semi-rancid, it is not psychoactive. It is not able to have the anti-inflammatory benefit that your brain and body need. What does that suggest? You really would benefit from a higher quality grade of fish oil. Now, the really good news is there are some very high quality supplements available 